All right, we are back here at SCGCon Charlotte, playing some modern, some crazy rounds so far. I watched our world champion so far. I watched Ross Merriam so far. I think we're going to have uh, them on again as well. I know the seating is a little interesting, obviously, as far as our city goes. They don't have things moving around too much, but I'm Jim Davis. My name is Nicole Callahan, also known as Lady of the Crease. And uh, of course, we're, I'm, I've got to say, and I mean, you know, break, breaking the fourth wall and all, but the coverage <laughs> looks so good. Sm uh, Hulk smash through that wall. Yeah. Uh, these hand cans have been phenomenal. Everything looks really, really, really great. So, Anzit, you're killing it. Uh, hype and chat for, uh, for Anzit. But we got Jimmy here, <laughs> our next, uh, our next opponent for the world champ. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jimmy on Azorius Hammer, a very quick, aggressive, like almost combo y deck against uh, Nathan Stars. Uh, is it Merc's Hide? And it looks like Nathan may have conceded. Yeah, we need to get a double check on that as far as the records go. We see Nathan here listed at 02. I uh, believe we drew the last round, but might have been a concession. And then, uh, oh, good guy, Nate. I know he was a little behind on board there, probably, you know. Yeah, definitely dead in two turns, I think. Right. You know, not deterministically, but like almost so. Uh, so, if so, good guy, Nathan, taking a draw is basically a loss at this point anyway. So, yes, and we're going to take a look here at openers and looking at Jimmy's Stop. hand, who's up. Hammer time. <laughs> It wasn't funny. <laughs> it sounded like laughter to me. <laughs> All right. We're, we're taking a look. Um, looks like Nathan Happy Keep has like a lightning bolt in hand. So an answer to an early threat. And uh, Jimmy going to start things off right away. To guard his aid. Yeah. This is going to be cool, actually, because so far we've seen three matches. They've all been very similar matchups. Two Merktide uh, uh, decks. And then, I'm sorry, we have Merktide, Elementals, and then the, the Rosses, you know, Jeskai Breach. Jeskai Breach, sort of Merktide. Grinding deck. Station, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, so Hammer's Time bringing a little something different here to the equation. Uh, deck that can kill very, very fast, but can grind also with Urza Saga, too. Yeah, so we see Stoneforge Mystic coming down onto the battlefield here and finding a hammer. So Nathan's saying, you know what? I got to take care of that real quick. I'm just going to bolt the Stoneforge Mystic here before yeah. we do any more work. Yeah, with Hammer in hand and Sigarda's aid in play, uh, anything is a major threat you know, uh, needs to be dealt with. So Nathan, uh, once again here on the back foot, on the draw, and uh, we'll see uh, if he can wiggle his way out of it. Yeah, it's a scary place to be, I feel like. And we'll see what he has here. Definitely a little behind on the draw. Yeah, one of the issues the Merktide deck has, of course, is that all its removal is damage-based. Mm. So as you're saying in the last mirror matchup, once that... Shredder gets to a seven toughness creature, kind of hard to kill. And then a uh, hammer is pretty big as well. So a hammer on literally anything is going to be almost impossible for Nathan to remove. Yeah, Nathan playing an island and just passing the turn back, keeping up counter spell here as Jimmy plays down an Urza Saga on chapter one. Oh yeah, max punishment here in every step of the, every sense of the word. Uh, we see the Saga comes down as an uncounterable threat and a creature and another creature. The hammer's still in hand. The aid's there. Uh, oh boy. Yeah, um, uh, Counterspell going to take care of that Stoneforge Mystic, and Jimmy just passing the turn back to Nathan, who has moved an expressive iteration to the front, also has a Ledger Shredder, a couple lands, and a couple of Mishra's Bobbles. Yeah, now, um, interesting choice here. So Jimmy could have just played the Hammer uh, on his turn and equipped to the Ornithopter, and there'd be a 10-12 in play. It'd be very hard for Nathan to heal. To feel. Now, normally, you don't want to play your instance, you know, Right. It, you want to play that instant speed, obviously, as a trick or on the, on the opponent's turn, but Nathan was tapped out and the window was there. And now, if he goes for the uh, the pump at some other point, Nathan could possibly respond. So we'll see how that plays out. So looking very good there with the Saga and play and the uh, the threat of the hammer looming. Right. Knowing that Nathan has cards like Counterspell and Spell Pierce and things in hand. And at the Burger Eye decks do occasionally play maybe one or two copies of the card Archmage's Charm. Which could steal the Ornithopter in that respect, but it's it's usually between zero and one copies, if that. Uh, so maybe playing around that, and it obviously has the Saga in play too, and the Saga's gonna make some tokens as well. So a lot of good things going on for Jimmy right now. All right, Misha's Bobble from Nathan's side gonna look at the top of Jimmy's deck, um, and we see that Ledger Shredder. Just Nathan is cast. Head if he forgot to connive, maybe. Nathan has cast like a bajillion bobbles this tournament. Yeah, right. I feel like every every opening hand, he's had like three bobbles. Yeah, so here's the end step hammer. End step hammer. And even the though the, the shields are not down for Nathan, uh, there's there's nothing there. We got a huge, uh, huge thopter. Nathan drawing two off of the Mishra's bobble triggers. But Jimmy seems to be firmly in the driver's seat here. Yeah, this is looking really bad for Nathan. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, even with 
without the ornithopter, just having Sagarda's aid resolved in play and the saga available also is very, very good. But um, 10's a lot. 10 is a lot. It's a decent amount of damage. <laughs> when, especially, well, as we had said earlier, hey, this is it. Hold on. <laughs> How about 20? Is that more than 10? <laughs> more than 10, maybe more than 14 as well? I mean, it's, it is overkill because, you know, Nathan being at 14. So. Yeah, just totally unnecessary. Unnecessary. Just attack for 10 <laughs> twice. Show some respect for the game, you know? <laughs> As we move into sideboards here. Now, what is Nathan going to be looking for to keep this Azuri's Hammer deck in check? So we saw the Blood Moons there, uh, very, very clutch against Urza Saga. Saga is an important one, you know, because Saga, actually, we, we, we don't see the Blood Moons. We see, we see the, the dress downs, actually, which is also very important against Saga. But the point being that Saga is a very, very important card to handle because it's an uncounterable threat, makes multiple threats, and finds the hammers. So if you can try and keep that offline, an easy way to kill the construct is pretty important. Uh, it's important for, for Nathan to get out, out to a fast draw here. Um, but the hammer deck has a bunch of really cheap creatures to, to block Ragavan as well. You know, um, Mem Knight in and out of hammer decks occasionally may or may not be on the list, but even then, just play Esper Sentinel, a bunch of cheap creatures. So, blocking Ragavan is definitely a thing. Uh, we see some braids there, some fury looks pretty good as well. So, I think this is on Nathan here to kind of get out, try and get under the hammer deck because the hammer deck has the ability to kill you on turn two. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the late game stuff is pretty good too. So, um, Definitely going to be important for Nathan to have the kill spells there. He did not have it that game, uh, even though Jimmy did, did, did give him a little bit of a window there to yes. kill that Ornithopter. Uh, but um, we'll see. And a Bredo helps you also be able to actually kill the hammers. It looks like removing a lot of the counter magic here in spell pierces and counter spells, as well as shaving some lighter shredders. Yeah, I mean, the, the counter spells are tough. You know, most of the cards in Hammer cost one. So you're trying to use the card counter spell to counter them. It's not very efficient. And then spell pierce can't hit any of the creatures also. So oh. I'm a little surprised to see spell pierce removed, honestly, because it does still counter cigar as aid and counter a hammer itself. Uh, but going to rely a little more on removal spells here. Yes. And we see both players ready to head into game number two here. The SCG Con 20K, modern 20K. Yeah, $20,000 on the line. A couple RC invites, top four. Yeah. RC is, RC is in a. I believe this qualifies the one in San Diego, but it might be the next one. Actually, I'm not that, that I'm not sure Dallas. about. I'm uh, not the one sure. in Dallas, but um, I, yeah, I think it might be this. The, uh, RC California. is RC is the path of the Pro Tour. It you is top forty eight at the RC. You call them for the Pro Tour, and uh, also and could be a path to Worlds, right? That's true. That's right. First and second place at the RC qualifies for Worlds. So Paper Magic is back. We got it a is. little a little OP structure here again, which is super exciting and great to see. Pro Tour was awesome a few weeks ago. And uh, just good seeing people shuffling up cards again and playing Magic. Yes, it does. And we are ready here for game number two. Nathan behind um, here, but going to be on the play. So uh, how big is the play here? It's pretty important. Yeah, you know, the Merc Die deck just in general is pretty important. If you're playing a Ragavan deck, the play is pretty important. You know, Ragavan of the play versus Ragavan of the draw is, is night and day in some matchups, but still very important. I see some of uh, Nathan's sideboard Magic here in... Uh... Ex engineered explosives that is a really good one so. explosives is not only a good answer to uh to saga tokens but can also kill us you can kill hammers you can kill one drops and lots of stuff yep so explosive i got unholy heat and misha's bobble and consider with three lands uh this is a solid hand from nathan here uh it's very reactive you know but um i would say the explosives is probably one of the best cards that nathan has access to you have to consider in there right you'll find whatever you want Let's see, Jimmy Mulliganing down to six, so I'm going to take a look at a seven-card hand here. And decide, it looks like Double Plains, Arid Mesa, Stoneforge Mystic, a Springleaf Drum, an Ornithopter, and a Sigarda's Aid. Looks pretty good, yeah. And got, got the Aid, the creatures, the, the Stoneforge. Happy to ship back that fetch land here, so still two lands in hand. Um, how well does Hammer Deck Mulligan? Pretty well. You know, Esper Sentinel Esper helps out a lot there. Mm -hmm. uh, the Urza Saga, you know, you're, it's not really a combo deck, like a pure combo deck. Obviously, you are, you can't kill on turn two. You know, right. you are assembling this combo of Sigarda's Eight and Hammer, but there are a lot of good fair cards in the deck too. So you are kind of looking for the right pieces, but you can also want some, some card quantity, but cards like Sentinel do help with that a lot. We see Ornithopter, Springleaf Drum, the plays from Jimmy, and then Sigarda's Aid coming down. So... This this gotta what, be uh-oh. <laughs> that's what I was saying about Spell Pierce, you know, like, I mean, a Spell Pierce here would have been huge, you mm -hmm. know, uh, but Nathan disagrees, so. Yeah, we see, consider drawing a Murktide Regent for Nathan here, so not going to the bin with that one, and then drawing a land for turn, uh, or a counter spell in hand, so looking to leave that one up, uh, playing a Scalding Tarn and passing the turn back. We see Teferi on the side of Jimmy, 
Uh, it's very, very good against these Murktide decks. Yeah, and uh, has the drum to cast it as well. We're going to go for Stoneforge first. So, I mean, we're in the spot now where anything Nate has to counter almost everything. And, of course, Stoneforge getting a hammer is very scary, too. Right. And we see Counterspell is going to take care of that Stoneforge Mystic. So, to the bin it goes. Um, and that looks like that was Jimmy's turn, too, whether or not he has another one mana play to follow that up with. Yeah, this is the thing where any naturally drawn hammer is so good for Jimmy. You know, the, the Nathan just living in fear. You know, like, it's all right. You got a Thopter, you got a Mana, you got a Cigar Zade. At any point, this could be a 10-10. Right. Or 10 12. Nathan can breathe because Jimmy just passes the turn back. So back to Nathan we go. And after the deck is cut, Nathan's going to draw off the turn. And we see an Unholy Heat in Nathan's hand as well. So a few kill spells now. There's a Bolt there also. Island engineered explosives here on one. Also not bad. Now, interesting choice <laughs> though, I guess. So Nathan passing the turn. Mm -hmm. Um, this would allow Jimmy to possibly use Cigar as aid, but obviously the explosive can blow up the hammer too. Right. So a little bit of a cat and mouse here as far as who's gonna do what when. We'll see uh if Jimmy is willing to commit anything else to this board now with the engineer explosives out in the open it's there you know there's no there's no questioning it so jimmy now is going to want to get nathan to blow that up while jimmy still has other resources in hand yeah and honestly just just playing a a non one mana thing is pretty good the fairies are pretty good one here and the question yeah. is what do you do with it yeah as jimmy is deciding here Now, if you go if you go down, you get to draw a card, but there's mm -hmm. not anything good to bounce here anyway. Right. And then going up defense against uh, Lightning Bolt and Holy Heat and so on and so forth. And very, very important card to have in play because the um oh boy. Oh boy. All right, so we see a minus here on the explosives. Nathan sacks it in response, which fizzles the ability, so there's no, no draw, draw either. But if, I mean, that could be in Jimmy's grand scheme of things. So I try to get Nathan to blow up this engineered explosive so he can safely play the rest of his hand, maybe a second cigar to Zade or a hammer or something like that. So uh, Jimmy knowing that he can't play out the the namesake of his deck while that explosives is on the battlefield. Yeah, I mean, it it forced the action on explosives, but at very, very heavy cost. Still mm -hmm. lost the cigar to Zade, still lost the drum. Lose yes. it very now to any of your burn spell being at one loyalty so that's a rough one you know the choice there i mean plusing to ferry up to five has, keeps it mostly safe from things and you kind of just keep playing a longer game mm -hmm. uh now the board's been forced and now they're coming to the mid game here both players not having much but nathan has two lands to jimmy's uh i'm sorry nathan has four lands to jimmy's two and now you're right. just i'm just gonna probably uh seal the deal here honestly <laughs> so ornithopter murktide yeah you know <laughs> need a hammer by itself, Ornithopter, not really good enough. Oh boy. That is a 6-6 six, six Murktide Regent. And Jimmy, remember, was also on the Mulligan here. So oh, there's back. another cigar to aid. Now, oh, oh, there is the hammer. Maybe he was setting it up. Oh! Oh, oh the big <laughs> setup. <laughs> and the letdown. But this Murktide is getting in for six. So Jimmy down to 14. It still is going to take a few swings from this Murktide. So Jimmy has a few draws here. Yeah. I mean, there's still the Ooh. aid in play, but not a lot else going on. So right. it cost a lot of resources to set that up. And Nathan had the perfect answer. Yes, he did. As Nathan gets across once again. Oh, we see Giver of Runes on Jimmy's side here. Would have liked that earlier to protect the Ornithopter. Yep. Dragon's Rage Channeler also from Nathan. So doubling up on the amount of threats, we see uh, Ink Moth Nexus being played on Jimmy's side. And saying, you know what, I can't I can't go through with this, so we gotta move on to game number three here. So well All played right. by by Nathan. Yeah, uh, that explosive is very, very clutch. Yes. You know, as we said in the opener, that's a really important card in the matchup. There's a lot of really good things that we saw there. You know, being able to mop up the cigar is aid and, you know, an Esper Sentinel and a drum and a this and a that. And then also have the utility to kill the Urza Saga tokens is huge. Now, do you think Nathan will have any consideration for a card like Spell Pierce here uh, in game number three? Uh, yeah, I mean, I again, I'm, I'm surprised the that uh, the Pierces came out. They are a little worse than the draw, though. 
because mm-hmm. you know on the play you play land go and they cast their cards they spell pierce it on the draw a lot of the important cards cost one yeah. uh but even then i still think it's an important card in the matchup so we can see boarding it out and then, or boarding it back in and then cutting a ragavan on the draw right so a single ragavan looks like coming out and uh putting in a single spell pierce in its place i'm reconsidering things here i'm gonna take a little look look through see if there's anything else he would like to pull out looking for something looking for something haven't found it yet hmm. nope gonna go down nope. through ragavan which makes sense honestly there's a lot just of blockers on the on the on the play for jimmy here just, even right. a stoneforge mystic you know just something so i mean ragavan in in general is just a, a little more underwhelming on the draw absolutely so We'll see. Jimmy, it looks like he's all ready for game number three here. And uh, which one of these players is going to claim their first win of the day? Yeah, that is that is true. You know, one of the um, one of the results of having a match like this where we have Bob's focus on a certain players is that you know you're kind of locked in. You know, and if oh, Nathan's yeah. having a rough day, we're we're here to see it. And this is a knockout match for right? top eight, essentially. You know, um, you know, being I'm sorry, that's not, that's not, that's not, that's not true. It's a two no. day event. Two I'll days. Give, sorry, my bad. You're thinking but, of one day, like I mean, X and two. it's a it's an emotional knockout match. You go, you start your tournament sure. at three, you might as well be heading to the bar, right? You know, so uh, so no, I'm not <laughs> a go tour Charlotte. <laughs> technically, yeah, yeah, not technically a knockout match, but um, it feels like one. Mm-hmm. That's when you go scout out the restaurant you're gonna have dinner yeah, at. Yeah, it's like all right, <laughs> let's start taking to open up Yelp here and see what's going on in the area. <laughs> we see. In Nathan's opener, another ex- engineered explosive, a uh, couple lands, counter spe- some counter spells, counter magic going on, Mishra's bobble, and uh, looks like Jimmy shipping back his opener while Nathan is happy to keep. Yeah, I mean, again, the one of explosives showing up for Nathan, and uh, it's a real, real important one. Yeah, and uh, we'll see if this seven works out better for Jimmy. I'm taking a look, it looks like double planes, Urza saga. A cigar is aid, a stone forge mystic. It's a good hand. And yeah. Uh, so a big one here is honestly turn one Esper Sentinel, mm-hmm. which is exceedingly good in the matchup anyway, but you see Nathan has no answer to it. Right. So if that Sentinel draws a card or two, that is real good. All right. And it is a turn one Esper Sentinel. Something that Nathan has been able to avoid in games one and two so far, but is going to get hit hard here in game three. Yeah, uh, really, really powerful card. A lot of the the draw of his hammer deck being a really good Sentinel deck and a really good Urza Saga deck. And those are the things that make it not a one-trick pony. You know, you're not just like trying to do this hammer thing, and if you don't, you're going to lose. Like, you get to draw cards, you get to make tokens, you get to grind, and it's got an impressive amount of grind to it for a deck that looks like, like an infect deck from back in the day. Right. It, it's not as, as linear as it seems. But Nathan deciding what to do here, because this is a big deal. It's like, do you just try to kill this Esper Sentinel right away and just be like, you know what, draw your one card. I said, I just don't want to see it again. Like, is it worth you? Know, it looks like Ragavan's going to come down here on, yeah. on Nathan's side. It looks like the options were either explosives on one, let your opponent draw a card, or play Ragavan. Like, playing Ragavan's pretty good here, honestly. You know, Ragavan, it's important to note that the Ragavan... You think of it running away with the game, it hits your opponent, yada, yada, yada. If you just play Ragavan and attack with it and trade, that's a lightning bolt. Right. That's still really good. You know, so like if the Ragavan trades with the, the Stone Forge or the, the Esper Sentinel here, that's not a bad exchange. You think about this like Ragavan sub game, I want to get my Ragavan in and kill your stuff, but like that's still a, not a bad fail state, which is why the card is so good. All right. And we see Stone Forge Mystic coming into play here. That resolves, fetches up a Colossal Hammer for Jimmy. And uh, it's a pretty good turn, too. It's a pretty good one-two punch here as for Sentinel into Stoneforge Mystic. So Nathan's going to have a hard time removing either as Ragavan gets into the red zone. So it seems like a pretty easy Stoneforge block. But again, Nathan has to be you know, kind of okay with that exchange, realistically. Also, if Nathan wants to get this uh, explosives on one going online here, too, and getting Ragavan to trade with something that doesn't cost one is pretty good. Right. So important, important use there of like understanding the, the the relative value of cards rather than the the in a vacuum value of the cards. You know, yeah. Ragavan's great, but in this spot, it's going to do this job that it's supposed to do. It's, it looks like Mishra's Bobble going to be the follow up for Nathan. Got to pay the one. Got to pay gotta, the one. Got to pay your taxes. Paying the Esper Sentinel tax and Misty Rainforest going to be played on that side and engineered explosives we will see come down on one so because it is the second non-creature turn uh spell of the turn 
As for Sentinel will not draw a card, I'm going to fetch up that island and pass the turn back to Jimmy. So, shields are down. What do you got? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, obviously if it's like land, Cigar is aid, Hammer, Hammer, you're dead, sure. But I think realistically, you know, this, this is going to, Dave's going to get to untap here, use the explosives, and now Jimmy's in the squeeze of like, well, how much stuff can I play into his explosives? Right. And especially, again, already on the mulligan. So, we'll see Urza Saga coming down. Tapping two. For and pure steel paladin. paladin. Yeah, that's a... Uh... A powerful card and doesn't doesn't die to explosives on one. <laughs> sure, yeah. It allows draws, of course, off of the uh, the equipment plays as well. So again, more kind of card draw. You know, it's a combo piece in that it equips hammer to things, but drawing the cards is huge too. That's right. And passing back to Nathan, unholy heat in hand. A couple of counter spells. A little slow here, it feels like. Uh, but no third land. There are actually two explosives in Nathan's deck. Oh. I thought I only saw one. We got the, the mismatched arts mismatched here. Mismatched arts. <laughs> but, uh, very, very powerful. But yeah, definitely uh, not too much going on here. And normally, you know, Nathan wouldn't mind being the control deck, but not listeners of Saga in play. We'll see. It looks like Jimmy's deciding what to do to, to kick off his turn number four here. Urza Saga currently on the second chapter, so able to make some of those Karn structs. It looks like. As for Sentinel and Pure Steel Paladin, just going to get into the red zone. Uh, Nathan's at 15. Yeah, it's, you know, it doesn't seem like much, but I mean, realistically, 15 life, 3 damage, like, going to force some action here. Right, chipping away, and, you know, eventually it could make a single hammer lethal as well. Mm -hmm. So getting to that 10 or below, very important. It just feels more like a grindy Urza Saga game to me than a uh, boss hammer game. Although... Strange here. Uh, Jimmy's going to replace the poor Shirsa Paladin and take down the mana for Urza Saga. Yeah. So it looks like, you know, playing the second Pure Steel Paladin, uh, you know, Nathan was happy to unholy heat the first one and just passing the turn as Nathan misses third land drop once again. So that's keeping Nathan from being able to play out a threat and hold up counterspell at the same time. Yeah. I'm very surprised here to not see a, a token over the, the Pure Steel Paladin. So. Wanting to get the Paladin play, but leaving a little value on the table. And... Yeah. It's like going to make a Karn Struck this time around. So we have the Chapter 3 trigger of a stack, the Karn Struck trigger of a stack, and now an Unholy, unholy Heat trigger of a stack as well. Now that's going to take care of that Pure Steel Paladin, paying the tack for Esper Sentinel as well. And Karn Struck, here it is. I am Karn. <laughs> Not an entirely impressive one at the moment. Just a 2-2, two -two, but has room to grow. About to be a 3-3, three -three, and we'll see what Jimmy wants to get here. Of course, getting a card that costs 0 or 1, any card that costs 1 gets tagged by explosives. So we'll see what uh, what Jimmy's got going here. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Jimmy taking a look at the hand real quick. We know there's a hammer and basic land in hand as the moment has three or four cards in hand, though. So, oh, Shadow Spear. Okay, so I think that's like trying to get something that's not super useful, so if it gets blown up, it whatever, but also has some value. It grows the uh, grows the construct, right? You know, maybe a little life gain here or there too, but could increase the tax on Esper Sentinel. That's well. true. That is true. As the second Urza Saga comes down here, oh boy, that's powerful. Yeah, I mean, chaining sagas here is really, really good, especially with Nathan on the back foot. Um, Nathan does have explosives number two in play. So Nathan can um, can uh, pop it on zero and grow and kill all these constructs. We see the equip here going to go on the on the, the Esper Sentinel. Sentinel, so a little tacking like you were saying, pump that tax up. Yeah, and getting in for two here as well, um, and has life link. So Jimmy going to gain a little life there, whether or not it's important. We'll, we'll wait I mean, honestly, you know, Nathan doesn't need to kill Jimmy, and the the longer these mm -hmm. sagas have to keep trying to doing their thing, you know. Yep. Pass back and to Nathan once again. Nathan uh, drew an expressive iteration, but can't cast that and keep up, you know, counter magic yeah, or anything like that. Pretty risky. So Nathan's playing defensively here, but, uh, you know, gotta make some land drops. You're not gonna win the game, you yeah. know? So uh, with a bolt in play with a hand, also, you know. Yeah, I mean, this uh, the Urza Saga getting bigger, ready to make more constructs that are only going to get grow each other as well. 
So you see, this is an attack for five. All right, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. Boom goes the dynamite. Down to one on that car instruct. Yep. I think that dice is there. It's not, it doesn't actually have counters. It's just to show exactly how big it is. Yep. And uh, see if Jimmy has a follow-up here, anything he'd like to do, or is he going to leave that Urza Saga up to be able to make a car instruct? It looks like that's the deal. Yeah, we already, already passed it up. We'll Nathan's got to figure out what to do here. Now, of course, Explosives on zero is very good here. Yes. You know, mobbing up these car instructs. Um, Jimmy could have opted to make up the hard instruct in combat to do an extra point of damage. Decided to leave the mana up to have a little more uh, options. And Nathan does hit his third land drop here. So an explosive on zero wouldn't cost Nathan anything except for knowledge uh, on Jimmy's side. So Jimmy could say, you know, Nathan could just say any hard instruct you make from here on out, I'm just going to blow up. Or Yeah. Um, a lot of work to do on Nathan's side. Yes. Yes, there is. It's very stock Dan, double counter spell. Lightning bolt, expressive iteration. And a Merc Tide in the front. And house? a Merc Tide, yep. I mean Merc Tide's a huge one. So right. I think there's a lot of pressure on Nathan to try and find land number four here. So it can be Merc Tide plus counter spell. So I mean iteration and also iteration here if it finds a land, you should play explosives on zero also. Yes. You can play explosives on zero, have counter spell up and explosive have explosives up and have Merc Tide next turn and have counter spell on that too. We'll see. And it, it, Nathan also, he agrees. It's time It's time to deploy the threat. Yeah, I, I guess Nathan Nathan played the uh, the fiery of his turn, right? Right. So, okay, so there, could, there, couldn't, be a, there couldn't be a fourth land drop. He, he had missed his third land drop for some time and finally drew it this past turn. So he was able to play the fiery islet and uh, is going to make a decent sized Merc Tide here. We're looking at a 5-5. Five, five. Looks like Jimmy's not going to make a token on the end step. That's interesting. It, Maybe forgot. Uh, yeah, it's hard to think of a reason not to, but hmm. going to make one here on the third chapter trigger. Yep. So that Karn struck, they will both be two twos here. A uh, little outclassed by the flying five five at the moment. Yeah, and then of course, once next turn rolls around, we're going to see uh, Nathan play the explosives on zero, mop all this stuff up, and then now it's a clock in play. Right. So Murktai can get in and start, you know, closing this game out. So up goes Urza Saga. Jimmy is going to take a look through his deck and what will Urza Saga third chapter fetch up here? We've already seen the Shadow Spear come down. Uh, you know, there's always hammers. <laughs> I suppose there's a, you know, spring leaf drums and things like that, but not I mean, much. There, I wonder if there's an Aether spell bomb in there. Ooh. There's Blue Man in this deck, obviously, and spell bomb is a pretty good answer to Murktide. I guess we'll uh, find out. Can't get that one. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, it's got to cost zero or one. Yeah, so while the C the mana value of Sentinel is one, right. you need a card that costs exactly a zero mana colorless mana symbol or a one colorless mana symbol. Yeah, there's you know, it's limited limited choices. So hammer, springleaf drum. You know, maybe if like what else could this deck have? And it's springleaf drum. It is drumming it up. Of course, one of those tokens is summoning six. So right. A great source of, of colored mana here. Player's gonna pause for a second there. So Jimmy's already drawn for turn. These are now three threes. And the dice go up. Pump them up. Pump them up. Springly drum, good for something here. Let's see if he has a follow up play. Uh, I'm gonna tap. One and a white for a stone forge mystic. Okay. Taking a look through the deck, and I mean, is it a hammer here? You know, they play metal cysts and things like that. Um, I'm gonna be a call, gonna go for the the fair plan. And again, once again, like, like I was saying, this hammer, I guess, have a pretty good fair plan. It's Urza Saga, stone forge, uh, Caldera, yes. um, you know, not too shabby, and uh, it does make a uh, a germ, which I think it actually gives indestructible, but. Regardless, we see the, the bolt take out the stone forge. So right. seven mana is a lot. Uh, it's actually hard cast that one, which is of course the downside of that card. Yeah. So the equipped creature gets plus five, plus five. First strike, trample, indestructible, haste. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to a creature, exile that creature. All right. So we're gonna see the Murktide stay home. Yeah, I mean, Murktide stayed home. Uh, just you know, doesn't want to get comboed out. Is at ten now. Uh, had to take the one off the fiery islet to, uh, so that Nathan dropped down. So afraid to die, 
you know, get cheesed out here. Uh, so just going to play the, the engineered explosives. It's sort of like a safety valve and say, go. So this in this game. It seems pretty hard to die here. Uh, with the explosives in play. I guess it just doesn't want to be priced into having to use the explosives. So you can leave, leave, leave the counter spell up. But even then, though, the blocks aren't great regardless. Mark tries a 5-5. Five, five, five. We see here the Carnage Rocks can be a 4-4 four, four with the Nexus, Nexus or whatever. And any more artifacts can grow them as well. Um, we'll Nathan just blocking one of the Carnage Rocks. Not going to blow anything up. All right. So Na Jimmy didn't present enough of a threat to, to force the explosives. Um... And these constructs, uh, I mean, the one that is left is only a 2 2. Uh, and a turn, Nathan's saying, Okay, that's enough for me. I'm just going to blow up the other one. So, going to take three, but then happy to blow up the one that's left. All right. And now, with the counter spells in hand, uh, this game is rapidly approaching its conclusion. Despite the lights looking a little lopsided, uh, Nathan is, is firmly in control here. Right. Now, what what does Jimmy need to like get back into this game here? Uh, is there is there a, a combination of cards? I see a hammer in hand. There's an Esper Sentinel, and the Cauldra Complete that we know about. Double Ink Moth Nexus on the battlefield. Oh, Esper Sentinel getting counterspelled, so that not even hitting the battlefield. Yeah, uh, Sentinel doesn't seem super threatening here, honestly. You know, um, I mean, there's a hammer in hand, so obviously, you know, you get one shot with the Nexus that could be a little rough. Right. Uh, but, you know, Nathan has counter spells and rule spells to try and deal with that. So, Jimmy does have some time. As Igmorth Nexus does get across. One damage, one poison. Gotta get that poison on the overlay. <laughs> <laughs> usually, don't need to track poison with hammer because usually it's either 10 or, or 0 poison. So, right. just ends the game on the spot. Are you dead or are you not? Oh, there it oh, is. There Look at that. Is. I don't know why I even questioned the coverage. Right? I, my, my bad. My bad. <laughs> Ants is all over it. Especially with all these toxic things happening. All standard. right. You got to be ready for the poison counters. As we see Murktai region get in the red zone again, and that's five more damage. So Jimmy down to 12. Uh, there is double ink moth nexus on the side of Jimmy. Uh, the question is, like, is there a combination of, of cards here that gets him back in? Yeah, I mean, the next eye do block also if necessary. So each next eye right. is effectively a time walk. All right, that's just like seven. the mighty ornithopter. That is, that's, that's seven mana. Does he feel comfortable deploying a cauldra? Looks like um, it might be. Here comes the big boy. Into four open mana. Boom. That's brave. The thing is, though, that like this is honestly fine because you kind of want Nathan to counter this because that doesn't even win the race against the Murktide. Actually, I guess it does. Yes. Uh, it wins the race against Murktide. It it's is. close, but uh, but now there's still a hammer in hand for Jimmy, and if Jimmy draws a cigar to aid, might be able to just get the the one shot gun. Yes. Okay. It's important to note also that the the ink ink moth nexus is not toxic. It is infect. Infect does not deal the actual damage. So even though Nathan's at six. You can't just turn you know, three turns of next attacking to win the game. It could only deal poison counters, so. We'll see. Expressive iteration. Finding a bolt. And will that bolt go upstairs? Or will it kill the ornithopter? Uh, I mean, I think Nathan's trying to see if uh, he can find lethal here. Uh, bolt plus another Murktide might do it. Yeah, down to nine. And it looks like yeah. bolting the ornithopter. Going to get in. And this, this is still a healthy attack. Five damage. Uh, I guess the bolt going upstairs would cut down how many turns needed. Yeah. Shimmy is at seven. The bolt would have him at four, which would mean Murktide would be lethal by itself next turn. Jimmy kind of mulling over his choices here. I mean, he does have the double ink moth nexuses. Like you said, they can block. Yeah, we see Nathan's hand of Counterspell, Expressive Iteration, and Odawara. So Odawara and Counterspell do cover a lot of bases. That they do. Here is that second Merc tie we were talking about. Jimmy with a little nod of the head saying, oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be rather large. Now, there are happen. multiple next eye and play to block. So Right. So first, the first Merc tide will grow by... I think Ooh. it was all. I think it was the full five. That's big. That is a large Merc Tide. This is an attack for lethal. 
So Jimmy priced into blocking, uh, going to remove one of those plus one, plus one counters because the infect damage does give the creatures minus one, minus one. It's a hero block. Hero block. Martyr block. <laughs> and he's got the counter spell. They did plays the Odawara too. Um, <laughs> but Jimmy's go. saying that's, that's enough. This guy's got the one more jump blocker, but not going to get there. So Nathan will take down his first one of the day. Yeah, on the board. On the board. On that's what it is. Scoreboard. That does that does that does matter, Scoreboard. you know. And it's Nathan can still win the tournament, you yeah. know.